Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with G.E. Smith. Hello, John. G.E., so, so glad you joined us, man. Thank you, man. Happy to be here. Yeah. Well, um, I know you're in a bit of a hurry, and you've got, you've got the show coming up, so I don't want to take too much time. No but problem, man. Let's jump into this one right here. Yeah. Well, this is a 1949 Fender Champion Lap Steel. Wow. Uh, it's got a, what became the Telecaster Broadcaster pickup in there. I know. I wasn't sitting there, but I know that Leo Fender was sitting with his wife one night in 1949 looking at this, and he just grew this into a Telecaster. <laughs> right. It's the same finish, it's the same pickup, it's the same knobs, it's basically the same thing. You know, he just grew it. And I truly believe that. I mean, it's oh, funny to yeah. say, but I really do believe it. And um, I've been playing this a lot, and we, we use it in the show here. Wow, it um, is incredibly clean. Yeah, it's a good one. You know, I mean, these, these they're around. You know, because they made a bunch of them. And, sure. And you can find them. And I started buying stuff a long time ago, you know. Yeah, you got in the game early. I was lucky, yeah. Yeah. You know, stuff was, there weren't vintage guitars. It was just used gear and, and it was free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like when we'd go on the road in the old days, you know, you'd get out in, in the Midwest and somewhere. I'm talking like in the late 70s and early 80s. And there was so much stuff. Sure. You know. Yeah. And, and, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, pre-internet. Way pre-internet. Yeah, way, way you know. easier time to yeah. acquire that stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is. That's where fabulous. it started, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. When you put it together yeah. like that, it's almost yeah. like archaeology. You know, kind of digging back you can. and see where you it starts. You can look at it like that, man. Yeah. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. God, I bet the knobs alone on that are are more than you paid for it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be hard to get a set of those knobs. Yeah, because those are like the early yeah, broadcast broadcaster knobs. knobs. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, These that's a very cool start. And you've got the original case, too. No, that's not the original case. That's actually like an early 60s case, but I have the original case at home. Yeah. You know, but it, it, I don't want to get it all beat up. And sure. I want this thing to be protected, so that's a good solid case from like 62 or something. Do you have any misgivings about um, touring with, you know, vintage gear like this? No, or? man. Think about it. If a carpenter bought a great hammer yeah. and used it a couple times and said, this is a really good hammer, I'm just going to leave it home. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to happen, right? These are tools. Yeah. I truly believe they're tools and, and, I, and I use them. My Telecaster here. Okay, let's, that's a good segue. Let's jump into this, this Tele. This is a 1952 Telecaster. My mother bought me this for my 11th birthday mm. in 1963. <gasps> Okay. Oh. I was born in January of '52. On the 27th, this guitar is dated January 13th. Meant to be. '52. Must have been meant to be. You know, um, it was obviously in much better condition when we bought it. It was a used guitar. It was a hundred bucks. I have the little booklet where she paid it off 15 a month, 15 dollars a month. That know? is so sweet. And uh, yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky to get this. Yeah. God. And I've that's... always played this. I, I and I take it on the road. I play it. You know, I've seen you play that a on million times. a million me, times. Yeah. yeah, I played this with everybody. You know, I yeah. took this on the road for four years with Bob Dylan. Uh, it's you know, it's a great guitar. Wow. So when she bought you the Telecaster, did you want a Telecaster? Or is that just no? A I just wanted a uh, an electric guitar, and um, to work. I wanted to play. I had gotten an offer to play with some people in, in Pennsylvania where I grew up. Older people. Before that, I'd played acoustic, you know, with huh. my couple of my friends, you know, yeah. my, my little friends at school and stuff. And then I got this offer to play, so we went down and we looked around, and they had a uh, what was probably a '59 345, and this, and the 345 was two hundred dollars, and this yeah. was a hundred dollars, so there was no doubt the sure. guitar we were yeah. going to get. Obviously, you know? yeah. so we got this. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I'm glad because I think if I'd have gotten the 345, I probably wouldn't uh, learn the way I did. Right. The telly is such a part of your whole thing. It really man. is. You know, yeah. I'm just so comfortable when, when I got it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that is that's great to hear where it all started. Yeah. Too yeah. cool. Okay. So that's obviously your longtime number one. Yep. Now, what what have you made any changes to this guitar over the years? If I've had it refretted. Uh, twice since I've owned it. I bet. Um, but other than that, no, it's, uh, now it, it's an S, it says Esquire on it, but it always had both pickups, well, which kind of mystified me for a long time. 
But then somebody pointed out to me that in the old catalogs, there was a little thing down at the bottom of the Esquire page that said, if you want, send us $15 and we'll send you the other pickup or send your guitar back to us in Fullerton and we'll add the other pickup for 15 bucks in shipping. So I figure that must have been what somebody did because it's the pick right. guard's right and it's, and it's a pickup from way back then, you know. And yeah, obviously and so somebody popped for the $15 upgrade. Somebody went that 15 and, and uh, went for the telly. Yeah, know? God. So that worked out good for me. Wow, okay, well that is, you can't get cooler than that. You started cool, got even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so then, at some point, uh, well, some years ago now, Fender um, said that they would make a, a GE Smith, you know, Telecaster, which I was completely, if you can imagine, just beyond honored by, you know. Oh, sure. Uh, and I was really, there was a guy named Mike Eldred at that time that, that was there uh, at Fender, and Mike and I were friends, and, and I think he probably instigated it. So we got that going, and um, my big thing was to have the pickup sunk directly into the body, screwed right to the body, oh. like on this lap steel. Oh, right, right. right. The pickup underneath there is, is right into the wood. Yeah. You know, it's the same exact pickup, but I just wanted to give it a little more sound, a little more sustain, a little more fatness. Sure. And it, it, it really worked. And... Um, with with Mike Eldred, we, we worked up some very specific sort of uh, I wanted you know pickups to be a certain reading you know seven point four on the lead pickup and different things. Were you emulating your original one kind of in, in yes. that set? Yes, my original one and uh, another a fifty five that I have that I really loved. It was like a combination of those two guitars, the fifty two and the fifty five, and Fender made me. Uh, a sort of a prototype, Mike had it made up, and man, it was great. It was perfect. And I said, yeah. And then they said, well, let's do some colors. So I said, could we do red and black too? You know, they were going to do like a, a, a white one, you know, like a, like a good 55 white, you yeah. know, a red one or a black one. Now, they asked me, like, how red? I said, dark red, like, like my mom's lipstick in the 50s, you know? <laughs> so they sent me this. And this was exactly right. But this was the only one they ever made that color. Really? Then they just went to, like, whatever red they use, whatever sure. it's called, you know? Okay. And the neck was supposed to be a certain size, and it, the prototyping was kind of like that. And then when they started really coming out with the production ones, they were these big necks, which I like a big neck. And, and the neck I designed was a big neck, but it wasn't. So, and then the pickups were really random. It was whatever they, so at first I was a little bugged by that, you know, that the yeah. guitar was coming out random. And then I thought, but that's how they were in the 50s. Right. They were random. Oh yeah, snowflakes. So I, I cooled yeah. out about it, you know. And then after I thought about it a while, I think, I'm guessing again, but I think what happened was, Eric Johnson had done his Stratocaster. Yeah. And I know Eric was very particular about what went into that guitar. What, and I think he drove them nuts. And I came along and started saying, well, I want this and I want that. And they're like, yeah, right. You know? <laughs> and they just made whatever they wanted. But there are some really good, this is a great one, you know, uh, yeah. a, a G and this is just a, a neck, one of those big necks that they made, but it, it's really good. Uh, I had finish taken off of it. Yeah, cool. So and, it felt and, like an old friend, yeah. Just so it's, you know, the finish, I don't like it new sticky finish you yeah. know you want to be able to move around on it inlays are cool too so the inlays you may recognize the, yeah i didn't make none of this up <laughs> i just did what leo did you know god that's great man yeah. so that's how that happened oh that is really clever i did not put it together yeah okay that's that's three really cool instruments. Let's see where this is going. My good buddy Rick Kelly at Carmine Street Guitars uh, in New York City. We used to sit around and, and talk about, you know, the very first uh, prototype of the prototype of, of Tellys. You know, they made those pine bodies. I guess the story is Leo Fender and Doc Kaufman just went down to the lumber yard, bought some pine boards, came home, glued them together, cut this shape out, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and put a maple neck on. So me and Rick used to talk about, wow, you know, it, 
if it was pine and a pine neck too, wouldn't that, you know, just like crazy. <laughs> and then he got this couple hundred year old giant pine beams, roof beams from a building in the Bowery in New York City, 165 Bowery, that had come out of the ceiling there. And he had all this great pine that was old and had dried and, you know, had everything that you'd want. Oh. So he made these guitars. God, I this bet is, that wood's got to be like... It's like 200 years old. Sure, yeah. Something like that, you know, because uh, those are old buildings down there. Right. 150 years old anyway. Yeah. So this thing is, and there's no truss rod, it's a giant oh. neck. Wow. Big fat neck. Yeah, that looks like a huge neck. And I had some old pickups, you know, around. That's a 51 pickup that I put in it. But they're really good guitars, you know. Wow. Uh, the truss rod thing ever give any trouble not having a truss rod? Not on this, no, because this wood was so seasoned. You know, this wood was alive. Yeah, I imagine it's not. A long good, time right? ago. It's been dead for a long time and just dried out and the resin's all dried out and it's just solid as can be. But the guitar is so resonant. Uh, I was playing with um, with Hot Tuna, with, with your man Jack, right after I got this guitar, which now is some years ago. But we were playing at the Beacon Theater, and I hit a note like a one of those, and I held the guitar up in the air, and it just was sustaining, and I went bang, and I hit it, and it rang like a bell, and it just <laughs> The whole guitar was doing it, not just the string. Sure. So this thing is it's pretty magical. Yeah. You know? That's great, man. Yeah, good guitar. Yeah, and I bet that old growth wood like that, yeah, you couldn't, it's like iron. You it, can't it is, get... It's got great, he, you know, and Rick knows how to cut the wood, you know, so he's got very straight green. He also made me a bass that's fantastic huh. that I used when I played with Roger Waters and did the wall. Oh, right, which you is know. when I think we did the last run yes. on you. Yes, yeah. when they, they, they came out and saw us. And the first note, that the band plays in the wall is a low E. Ba -bom. Right. And man, I'd hit that in those big stadiums with the 75,000 watt PA system, that open E string <laughs> right. on that big pine bass. Forget about it. <laughs> ba -bom. The whole place would go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. That would be very cool. Pine. Okay. All right. Very cool. Now, amp wise. Amps. I got a lot of amps, you know, mostly fenders. Um, here I have two old Tweed Deluxes from 58 and a 60 that I've had forever, you know, like I, that I bought for 200 bucks or 100 bucks or wow. something way back, I don't even remember. Sure. I've had the sort of beat up one I've had probably since 1968 or something. Wow. And the other one I bought in the 70s. So obviously you've had to do tubes and things like tubes. that but anything and else actually yeah i put um celestian blues oh which is like a 15 watt speaker i think which is nice because the amp's like a 12 watt amp so it's in that range where you can almost overdrive you know you but you're never going to kill that speaker like the original jensen's which sound fabulous and those mm. amps you'll blow them up if you take them out like i am on the road and really play them and beat them you'll blow them up sure um, so these, the, the blues I've had in there a couple of years now and they just sound better and better and, and they really take a beat. That's great. Now, volume wise, how hot are you running those? Like where are you? The using? amps, yeah. I, I, they're like, the volume is like three, three and a half and the, because deluxe is open up right there. Yeah, There's a spot between three like and it. four where they really open up and the treble's on I think 10. See, most tweed guys, that's the secret. You don't run them, when you run them too hot, you just... It just flattens yeah. out. It just, yeah. you know. Everything's um, gone. The big ones you can run a little yeah. hotter, like the Twins and the Basements. Yeah. You can run a little hotter, but most of them, right up to the Bandmaster, the 310 Bandmaster, four. After that, it, it doesn't, it just distorts more. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you just kind of lose that clarity. Yeah. Now on SNL, were you running tweeds? I used that beat up one a lot God. on SNL. I also had um, basements, which you could see. Yeah. You know, that amp you probably couldn't see too often because it was just on the floor. Uh, and I would use different things for different songs, you know. Yeah. I just caught, I was doing like a YouTube rabbit hole and caught that thing with you and Van Halen yeah. on the show. God, that was great. Man. That was so much fun. Yeah. You know? he, uh, he was married to Valerie Bertinelli at the time. 
and he came along to New York with her where she was hosting the show and I had an office where you could hang out and he could smoke cigarettes at the office he was still smoking at the time and so he started coming up a little bit to the office and hanging around and I had a Martin D28 up there not the best D28 ever made you know kind of hard to play and <laughs> but it was just something I could leave in the office he picked it up and started doing all his stuff the <laughs> tapping and you know on 12s and I'm like Wow, man, how you doing? And so we, we were just goofing around, and, and I said, why don't you play something? And he did, he had this sort of a lick that he had going already that he thought of, and we wrote that up for the horns, and that's what came out, and he just played great. Yeah, that, that was an amazing clip. You know, the amazing thing about his playing to me is that, yeah, he does all the wah, boom, and blowing up and explosions and stuff, but it's beautiful. It's always beautiful what he plays. There, there's great, fluidity and, and melody and real music in what he plays. You know, a lot of guys took up that style and did that kind of stuff, but it's not always as musical. Sure, yeah. Ben Allen, man, he's always musical. Well, hearing that thing of you, I mean, it's just such a wonderful live musical moment of the two of you doing it. It was fun. It was, yeah, anyway. And that was a great band. Yeah. You know, no, no uh, normal human could have afforded that band. It took a network <laughs> to be able to pay for that. Right, you know? right, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, uh, that's a rabbit hole you should probably go down viewers watch that show and let's talk about this pedal board It's a fairly modest pedal board. Really? That's modest because to me that's obscenity Because <laughs> I never used pedals at all although I had a couple of those pedals for a long time That chorus pedal I bought as an old boss first issue Yeah um, When I was playing for Daryl Hall and John Oates in the Really? Yeah. That's probably like 81 or 82 we went to Manny's Yeah on sure Street. And just went, yeah, give us all, boss, yeah, give us all those. <laughs> yeah. So I have all those pedals at home, but I, and I always use that chorus with Daryl and John. Yeah. A lot, I would use that. Cool. And the, um, well, let's, you know what, let's start, let's take it right through the old okay. chain. Let's just hear well, what Well, you this. got a tune-up, so we got a tuner. Yeah. I think that might be a... a Korg. It's a Korg. Yeah. That's a Korg. And then the, the little green guy there is a Tremadillo. That Caesar, my dear old friend Caesar, who's passed away, Caesar Diaz. Right. That's one of the very first ones he made when he was just putting together. His son Alex painted that. Oh, that's when great. When he was like six or eight years old, he did the the painting on it. And then next is a hey, Catalan bread. Would you mind if we heard that? Uh, oh, that's that's a cool pedal. Yeah. yeah. For, I mean, let's do. Yeah, let's just. And that's that's like. So, what do you think? What year do you think he was doing that? That has to be from, we went out with Dylan in 88, and that's before that, so that's got to be maybe 84, 85. Wow, about the time that he was doing Stevie Ray Vaughan's vibro I, I, think, I think it's before he worked for Stevie Ray, so maybe it's even earlier. Wow. That's, that's well back in the 80s. God, okay, okay I got to hear that thing. Yeah, so check this yeah. out. So that's just... Regular, no yeah. pedals on. Yeah, just straight. Okay, right. but he's got a speed pedal on it too. Oh. Double up switch. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Caesar, Caesar always had good ideas. He also made me, um, back in those days, you know, the old Fender reverb units? Yeah. He made me a reverb unit with tremolo in it, with that tremolo built right into it. Ugh. So it was reverb and tremolo. And now a lot of people make those. Yeah. That's Caesar made those, the first ones. He that's really great. Did. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Then, then uh, next, is a, this is a cattle and bread plate reverb pedal. I oh, also okay. have their spring reverb pedal, which is also great. That company, Catlin Bread, makes great stuff. Yeah, great I, company. I truly love their, their pedals. I also have one of their um, 
What is that? Can the, you read that? Yeah, the five F six. Five F six. So it's like a, it's like a five F six, like an old tweed basement. But it's it's a great distortion pedal, and I love it because it's not fuzzy distortion. You know? Sure. I don't like that fuzzy distortion. I did that in the sixties. I don't need to do that again. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's just a good. I almost. I rarely use that, but man, when that kicks in, it's nice. It's just boom. Sure. A good, uh, good punch. Okay. And then coming around the corner is my original. In like 1972, I saw Little Feet. Oh Fred. yeah, Lowell First George, album, man. Four man band, Lowell George. And he had one of these Neutron pedals like this. It's uh. <laughs> real slow like yeah that. you know you can do a yeah you can do all that but I like that real there's a regular it's subtle man but it's it's great that's yeah a, that is great that's a cool pedal and I just like it because I've had it all that time sure now that's that's probably got like a hard AC line out. Yes, like you can't run that into hard AC line out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. And then um, this is the heart of my deal here. This tone bone switchbone. I've had that for a long time. I don't remember when they first started making those, but whenever it was, right away a buddy of mine, this great musician in New York, guy named Mike Nolan, who often finds things first, mm. he said, "You got to get one of these things. This is so cool." So. I use two amps. This has two outs that are buffered. Oh. And that if the two amps are out of phase with each other, it's just a little phase switch on there. You can put your amps in phase, well, that's which is great, right. you know? It's also got like a boost. It's got a mid boost or just a, just a power boost, like 5 dB, 10 dB boost. And that radio company, everything they make is so good and so well made. I've got a bunch of their stuff now. And, and I love it. It's great. So you can switch between one or the other or both. One or the other or both. You can set the polarity, uh, grounding. It's got a grounding. If there's a buzz in the room, sure. you know, it really helps with that. And it's got those the different boosts, mid-range and uh, gain boost. That's a really good um, pedal. That's great. Okay, so from and the then, tone uh, bone. Analog man. It's a What's it called? Decompressor. It, it's a compressor. Yeah. It's two different compressors. Uh, it's it's. Oh, one one's, is one's the old orange squeezer, and the other one's the Ross. And one is the Ross. The gray Ross, cool. And that was given to me by John Karen, who's who's the keyboard player, guitar player, all different things with, with Roger Waters. Still still playing with Roger. John's a, a fantastic musician, and he gave me that. He said, "Man, you, you should have this." You know, because I didn't have a lot of pedals. Yeah. Know? If you play with Roger, you gotta have some pedal. You know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I got that, and um, that's a really good, very useful compressor. Cool. You know, you can smooth it out. And yeah, in listening to you, it's not like you're hitting a lot of. It's not like you're on your board tap dancing all no. the time. It seems like you pretty much get a tone going and. Yeah, I use I use reverb, pretty much all the time. Yeah, and I'll kick in the. Compressor, like when I play the lap steel, I use the compression. Sure. You know, it's, it's great for that. Every once in a while, I'll throw the tremolo on. Yeah. Sure. Now, what is this final mystery one that's yeah, sideways? Yeah, that's the mystery one. That's from Pennsylvania, where I'm from. All right. Um, that, is, that is a very cool thing that's just on all the time. This is called the, this is the Chase Tone Secret Preamp. Okay. And Back in the 70s and 80s, there were those big echo units that we all played through. Made by, I can't remember now, who made them? Somebody will know. Yeah. Who made yeah, them. put it in the comments if you're one of those yeah. geeks that know Somebody it. knows. I know. I just can't <laughs> remember the name of the company. I played through one with Hall & Oates all the time. It was always on. Because inside of it was this weird little preamp kind of oh. thing that just made your guitar sound good. Oh, is it the Echoplex? Yes. 
Echoplex, that's it, yeah. They did have Ma an amazing what? preamp in it. Maestro? Was it, were they Maestro? No, it wasn't the Maestro. It was somebody uh, else made it. Anyway, yeah. it had this amazing preamp in it. So, he, this guy Chase, at Chase Stone, he's making these things, and it's great. I mean, it's just on all the time. And there's like a dark setting, 70s, I think it says. You can read whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. settings. Yeah, yeah, it's 70s EQ, and then there's mid, dark, and bright. Yeah. yeah. And I usually use it in the middle. And you set it and forget it, and it's that's, just there. That's it. Boom, it's about halfway up, and um, it's keep really it, great. Do you keep it sideways so you won't be tempted to step on it? No, so I keep it sideways because I don't have a cord long enough to lay it down. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it's just been sideways for about six months, and I kind of like it. Oh, you know? yeah, that's great. Because it's a secret. Really. Yeah. <laughs> a secret. That's great. And that's yeah. a great pedal. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man. I, uh, <laughs> I love that so many at your level. See, like, I mean, I'm, I'm always jacking with my well, pedal. My level, so. come on. I'm on the same level as everybody else, man. Well, no. Just another sucker on the vine. You know. <laughs> See, that's great. That's, that's true. That ain't great. That's just true. <laughs> well, you're, uh, you're a humble legend. and <laughs> I've worked with legends. I myself am. Oh. I have worked with them. I was very lucky on, oh, on that score. Oh, all of them. Yeah, God, really, I'm like, really lucky. Yeah, the, your your resume is, I mean, all of them, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, such a treat to Thank uh, you, meet you. Thanks a million, G. I always like to talk about gear, you know. Yeah, right. It's yeah. what we do. Yeah, what we do. Well, till next time. Thanks, folks. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest rig rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.